What is monkey patching? No, it doesn't refer to a patch of a monkey that you put on a shirt. It's actually a very useful programming technique. Monkey patching is modifying code dynamically during runtime. It works for dynamic programming languages like Python and Ruby. The origin of the name comes from guerrilla patching, as in guerrilla warfare. Then eventually it became gorilla, as in the animal gorilla. Then it became monkey. So we got monkey patching. Now let's see an example of monkey patching. So we have some other project, some module, and we're importing some class from it. Now we're defining our own method here, speak. And it just returns hello. And during runtime, we just set speak on some class to equal our method. So now whenever we call some class dot speak, it's going to say hello. Let's look at a live example. So if we import the random class and we can call the random dot random method, it's going to return a random number. But let's say we wanted to test a specific case. So let's define our own method, call it my random, and we'll return 0.5. Now what we can do is set random.random .random, the method to equal our method here my random now whenever we call this method it's just going to return 0.5 and this is very useful for testing because now we know that in this test say we have a unit test it's always going to return 0.5 and we can test that case if we want to reload the random module all we have to do is import import lib and then import lib.reload random now when we call random you can see that it's back to returning a random number. So the question is why monkey patch? The main use case is to extend third party behavior while not maintaining a private copy of the source code. So in other words, if there's a library that you're using and you don't want to copy it into your source code, you can just use monkey patching and modify the behavior that way. Two, you can mock out methods for testing easily. And I showed this with the random example, say we wanted to test a specific case of random, but well, we can just mock out the method to return 0.5. And three, you can run code in a staging or production environment without a deploy. And this is really useful. Let's say you have data in your staging or production environment, and you want to test out what happens with that data with some code. Well, normally you would have to deploy the code to that environment and then run it. But with monkey patching, you can just do it live. Okay, so what are the drawbacks of monkey patching? Well, for one, if there are two or more modules attempting to monkey patch the same method, the last one that runs wins. And this can get hectic. Imagine a case where there are 10 different modules monkey patching the same method. It becomes really difficult to know what's going on. Number two, it creates a discrepancy between the original code and the behavior. For example, random.random .random should return a random number, but with our monkey patch, it no longer does that. So in order to know what's going on, you have to know that there was a monkey patch that happened. And number three, monkey patches can make upgrades painful. When you do upgrades, things that you're upgrading change. And if you're monkey patching a method in a library that you're using, it's very likely that that method no longer works how it used to work. And now the monkey patch is invalid. You can run into all sorts of bugs that way. So to summarize, monkey patching is a powerful technique in dynamic programming languages but it should be used sparingly because of the drawbacks that we talked about. And with that said, if you enjoyed this video, please give a like and subscribe. And let me know down in the comments if there's any other topic you'd like to see next. See you next time.